Hey everybody, welcome to the inaugural episode of Card Talk, and I am one of your hosts, Dave Walsh. And I am Grant Thompson. Today, we are going to talk about Frodo Baggins. Frodo Baggins is a hero that exists in the, in the spirit sphere. He has two willpower, one strength, and two defense with two hit points, and has a threat cost of seven. He's got a really neat response, and I believe, and Grant, chime in if you know, right? Isn't uh, he from Conflict of Karak? Isn't that the adventure pack that he's from? Yeah, that's correct. He's from the Conflict of the Karak, the second adventure pack from the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle. Yeah, so just looking at this card, I really enjoy Frodo. I built a lot of mono spirit decks and spirit decks that used Frodo because he is able to cancel damage and take threat. And that combination to me is amazing. I just, I think that if you're going to play the adventure packs and the cycles and not the sagas, Frodo is a really good hero to use. I'd agree with that. Frodo has a lot of great about him. I mean, his willpower is always there for take for his constant two willpower. I mean, his attack stat is mad, but for a hobbit, what do you expect? You can't have a big beefy hobbit with three attack going around smacking orcs. They they're all about hiding secrecy. So having say Frodo with a low threat stat of seven, and he can take damage once per phase is threat is key and if you combo that well with greeting or um say a hobbit pipe and smoke rings you're able to reduce that threat that you've just taken and that's what i think is is brilliant is that it's in the spirit sphere which naturally has that threat reduction in ways to kind of mitigate the the threat that he could accumulate in some of the tougher quests where you're trying to cancel damage and save you know yeah. heroes and things up, like that yeah trying to go up against um the trolls from conflict at the carrot with just um frodo as a defender not a good idea unless right. you've got that threat reduction ready um yeah so that's one of the reasons why i think he's i would say a pretty heavy um, contender for one of my favorite heroes. And the other thing that I like about Frodo is that he, you don't have to exhaust him in order to use his ability. His response yep. is just cancel the damage and he can use that once per phase. Yeah, um, I think it would be pretty overpowered if you just took off that once per phase and just said any damage he would be dealt increased threat by that <laughs> damage. <laughs> right. You would just be like, well, there's a necromancer as we uh, Taking this threat. There's another yeah. necromancer's reach. There's just some more threats. In my opinion, it's almost a little OP that you can that you can use it once per phase. You know, like if if you get damage on the you know when revealed in the in the uh, encounter deck yeah. or something, and then all this you know you can cancel that damage, and then you can do it again in the defense phase, and then if you get something in the attack phase, I don't. It's just you can continually use it, and that's and that's yeah. But you've also got to keep in mind of the threat you will gain by using that ability so often you've got to use it with discretion so yes if you use running a low threat deck you can take more of that damage as threat but if you're say running say Boromir and Aragorn who <laughs> both got high threat and you're constantly taking that behind that up you're going to be engaging more of the enemies that are coming down to hit you, and you're just pumping your threat up until it says, right, you're threaded out. Right. <laughs> Next player. And actually, you're, you're bringing up something really funny. When I play, I always have a tendency to lose track of a threat when it comes, like, one or two at a time, as opposed to, you know, when you take ten a ten threat hit because you, you can't quest and there's seven enemies in the staging area and, and, and you need them to defend or so you know something like that it's like yeah i feel and so it's almost like the the dinking dinking the thread on you is um you end up losing track of and that's actually a good point to bring up is you have to keep your eye on the threat dial but one of the newer cards that i found works very well with frodo is friend of friends if you're running a hobbit deck yes um i actually run that in my hobbit tech now is that you need two copies you put one on two different hobbits and they get plus one to each of their attributes and plus one hit point for one cost each yeah 
And so that's that's a really good thing. You know, and I think his stats his stat lines are pretty solid for a hobbit. I think that that's what you were really getting at. Yeah. I mean, like I say, the only bad thing about Frodo is the fact that he's only got that one attack power. So if they put that maybe on his right. willpower and or his defense, or even as an added hit point, would have probably made him that little bit more durable for like, some of the later game sagas, likes of, um, say, some of the um, print-on-demand stuff, likes of Bat- Battle at Lake Town or the stone of eric or something right what else about frodo like what what do you think he pairs with i mean friend of friends definitely but what like um there's like like i said you have stuff like of um smoke rings and hobbit pipe and hobbit pony that are all later cards that have come out since the introduction introduction of the black riders right but back at the core set the core set in Shadow of Mirkwood and what have you, there was no real Hobbit attachment other than Fast Itch. But now, since the Hobbit cards, there is a lot more there to build upon. And I guess Build the Pony is nice with this because it gives an extra hit point. And then also, yep. Sam, the not the hero Sam, but the ally Sam, is a spirit ally. And so, and Build the Pony is free if you control Sam whether it's Sam the ally or Sam the hero. Sam, who usually costs three, with Frodo only costing one. Right. And then you spend that resource and you're getting a three willpower pony for, say, two resources. Right. Which is big it's time. <laughs> right. If the first round, you can bring out Sam for one and build a pony for zero, and you have now a pretty powerful you know, couple of allies. Now, drawing those cards in the first round may be wishful thinking. Well, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I mean, that just comes down to luck. It's stacked the deck in your favor, but then you've got a couple of dud cards because they're both unique allies. They're not like, say, Bill the Pony is unique. It's not like it's just like, oh, you can have three Bill the Ponies out there. That's an extra three lots of hit points for your hobbits. It's like, just draw what would now tend to um, draw it is Rosie Cot. I love Rosie. <laughs> As a, and it's a Rosie. So does Sam. <laughs> yeah, so does Sam. Right. <laughs> Sam gets nervous because in my Hobbit deck, I'll put a fast hitch on uh, on Rosie Cotton, and he's he gets a little nervous when uh, Rosie comes out with a fast hitch. You know. Well, yeah, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it. Just seems that to me, Frodo is a pretty versatile, low threat hero. Like, even if you're not going to use him in a Hobbit deck, I feel like he's just kind of a utility hero that has a really good response. Definitely. I mean, don't get us wrong, I like Frodo. I haven't used him as much since of later cards, which I've found that have more hit points and best stats. But Frodo is still one of my favorite heroes from the Spirit Sphere. I wouldn't say he's my most favorite, but he's definitely one of them. Yeah, I think that I have other kind of spirit heroes that I'm in love with more. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Frodo is is go to being one of the four spirit heroes that have come out from the core set because you had your three core set heroes. He was the first one released right. in the adventure pack for the spirit hero and. A lot was riding on him because most people think of Lord of the Rings, they think of Frodo Baggins. They don't think of, say, Glorfindel or big, right. like, book heroes. They right. just think what they've seen in the movie. They think of Frodo. Right. In Sam. You know, and what have you. And then, the, so he had a lot riding on him. And I think they did a brilliant job with Spirit Frodo. I think so too. In honor of it being the one ring to rule them all, I think we should use rings as the scale. Okay, so the rating scale out of rings, and so if it's the one ring to rule them all, do we make one the best or the worst? Well, as many people would say, yes, one and done. (laughs) One and done, okay. So... I'm going to start this off by saying that if I'm going to rank Frodo on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is the best, then I'm going to make Frodo a 3. 
Frodo's a three. He's really versatile. He goes in a lot of decks, but, you know, throughout the game, we talked about how he can't be used in all the scenarios because of the saga. Um, and he still doesn't have a huge, um, a huge stat line that I like to have, but definitely a versatile go to, uh, go to hero. Yeah, I'd agree with what you've said there. And in respect of that, I've put him at a solid four rings because although he's all around great, he's just not all there. If he had something that would have increased his stats just that little bit without having to rely on so many other cards, I'd probably have given him a three or possibly a two ring system. But at the minute, it's just not there. <laughs> yeah. So join us next time as we go over Lore Bilbo and talk about all his goods, bads, and uglies.